In this tutorial, we are going to use the query function to get the most frequently occurring text in a column in Google Sheets. Let's get started. So right here, I have a list of mystery words, and we can see that my answer to the most frequently occurring word is puzzling. I know that puzzling occurs seven times because I've counted it by hand, and I also know that cryptic occurs six times, which is the next frequently most occurring word. Now, if I was to type in cryptic, and hit enter. We can see now that cryptic and puzzling both appear here, which is fantastic. If I've got a big long list that changes all the time, we want to make sure that this formula here is changing dynamically with the updates that occur in column A. If you want to follow along, you can find a link to the starter Google Sheet and a written tutorial in the description below. So let's get started. So how does this all work? Let me take you through a walkthrough to help you build your own query to find the most common words in a column. So the first task for us is to get the frequency count for each value in this column A here. We can do this with the count if function. So first things first, we'll type in equals to start up our formula and we'll type in count if. Uh, uh, uh. And the first thing we need to do is to select our range. So we can click this A2 and drag it all the way down. But what if we want to add more values later? Let's get rid of this 19. So let's just click up the top here, backslash, backspace, backspace, backspace. And now it says A2 to the end somewhere in our column. Great. So the next parameter of our count if is the criterion. So the criterion allows us to, to think of a rule that allows us to count. So for example, if I wanted to only count anything that had cryptic in, I would type in cryptic in our criterion argument here. But I want to do that for every value. So I want to have the total count of all the cryptics in this column, and I want to represent it here, and I want to represent it next to obscure, back next to cryptic again, all the puzzlings, I want their total count as well. So to do that, we can simply go A, 2, A, and close our brackets. Now, it's only gone once. We know that cryptic occurs six times, but it hasn't uh, filled out the entire range all the way down to the bottom. We can fix this by using the array formula function. Now, the array formula function allows you to iterate through a range. And this is basically going, looking at this criterion here and saying, okay, well, let's look at A2 all the way down the column and compare the first one, which is cryptic, and count how many times cryptic occurs. And then on the next row, we'll count how many times obscure occurs. And then on row four, we'll count how many times cryptic occurs again, and so on and so forth, all the way down the column. And this is, gives us our list. Cool. So our next step is to combine column A with this column D into its own special array or range. We can do this with the array tool. So if I typed in, for example, equals and open up the curly braces, and if I said oh, I want A2 all the way down to the bottom and hit comma, and if I wanted D2 all the way down to the bottom and then close the curly braces, I'm going to get an array of both these values combined. And if I hit enter, there you see them appear. Now, that's, that's really helpful, but we want to put everything inside the one formula. So let's keep this A to A in our formula, but we'll put in our count if instead of this D to D. So we'll go count if, and we'll go A to comma, A comma, oh, that's an M, not a comma, A to colon a oh made a mistake here no wonder it wasn't orange and we'll close our brackets and now we also need to remember to add the array formula in so array formula to make sure it checks each and every row we'll close those brackets here and now we have the same thing cool so it's looking a bit more dynamic now that we have our little two column array, our next task is to find the max frequency as a value. So basically we want to count all the row, look at all the values in this column and find the highest number. So if I hit equals here, there's a really simple way of doing it. If I went equals and, and max, and then clicked on this column G, for example, and we'll say G2G, we've got seven. Now you might be asking, why can't I do that with letters? 
Well, let me show you. So if we change our G2G over to column F and go all the way down, and we'll just backslash and close our, close our brackets there and hit enter, we can see zero occurs because Max only looks at values or numbers. Max with our G2G is all well and good, but what we really need to use is this array formula over here. So let's, uh, let's hit tab to get out of that. And we're going to go back to this column D formula. I mean, what we want to do is copy and paste this in, hit control C, and I'm going to go back to I2, and instead of F2, F, we're going to hit control V and paste in our array formula count if, and hit tab. Cool. So now we have the max uh, frequency as a value. We've got our brand new uh, array of two columns. And our next task is to query the newly built array where column two is equal to seven. Now we can see it's equal to seven because we can see that seven is the maximum occurring value here. All right, so let's start off with a query. Now query uses a special query language. And if you ever work with databases, you might have seen something like SQL language. And it's kind of a human readable type of language. So the first thing we need to do for our query function is to type in query and open up our brackets. And the first argument it takes is going to be the data. That's going to be our newly formed array. So let's go ahead and copy and paste that in. So let's just tab out of that at the moment. It's okay if it's got an error. We'll go over to F2 and I'll select this array that we generated without the equal sign and hit Control C to copy and then tab over a bit back into our query and I'll hit Control V to paste it back in. Cool, so that's the data is our first argument there. And the next argument is our query. So for our query, what we want to do is to select column one, which is going to be this column here, where column two is equal to seven. And that sounded pretty English to you, right? So basically in query language, that's all you have to say. So we'll say select and we'll say col one where col two equals seven. And let's hit enter. Done. So here we can see that our query has found everything that is a seven, which is going to be our puzzling values. If we change and added an extra cryptic, we can see that it's also been added here and we've got all our ranges. Perfect. Now, if you have used query language before and you're scratching your head looking at these little coals instead of referring to the, uh, the letter value of each of the columns, it's because we created this array here. This array doesn't actually exist on the sheet. So the alternative for us is to call the, the column by a number, which will look at this array that's floating in the ether rather than on the sheet and count column one, which is this A to A and column two, which is the total count if of A to A. All right, we've manually coded in this seven, but what if we added another puzzling? It'd be eight and then our answer would be wrong, right? So we need a dynamic way for us to put in the highest or the maximum frequently occurring value for each corresponding text. How do we do this? Let's figure it out. So I'll hit tab and we'll open up another space here. And if you remember, we've got our little max array formula over here. What we're going to do is put this in inside the query. So to do this, we'll copy this over. So I'll just hit, I'll select and drag the whole formula and hit control tab, control tab, go back up into the cell, hit control V. And where it says seven, we're going to break out of the text, which is indicated in green here. And we're going to concatenate or join in something outside. So we've got a little ampersand and and another ampersand and and between the two, we're going to put our formula. So I'll hit tab here and I'll come up with the error, of course, but then I'm going to go over to this seven and select this max range just before the equal sign and hit control C to copy and then tab back over, jump into the formula bar and I'm going to hit control V to paste it in. And I can see it's automatically made a little error here by adding in the brackets in the wrong spot, which is cool. We'll get rid of those brackets, hit a space there, and that should be it.
Okay, cool. So everything's working out fine now. So if I added an extra, for example, puzzling into our mix, we can see now puzzling occurs eight times. It's still saying cryptic here because cryptic is occurring seven times and puzzling is occurring eight now. But we can see that now this max value is uh, keeping up to date with the increase in the change. Cool, that's exactly what we want. Let's get rid of that puzzling and we'll get rid of cryptic as well. No, we'll keep cryptic. It's pretty cool. Okay, so now that we've got that, the last thing we need to do is to find the unique values. So to do that, we are going to use the unique function. So it's super simple. All I would do is type in equals and unique. And then select our range and hit enter. Now we have our unique list of cryptic and puzzling mystery words that are the most frequently occurring in our list. That's great. Uh, we've hard coded that in, but let's put all this formula inside our unique function. So I'm going to go back to M2 and select the entire range, except for the equal sign. Hit Control C to copy, tab all the way over, and get rid of M2 to M15, and hit Control V to paste, and hit Enter. And there we have it. Our formula for getting the most common words in a column in Google Sheets using query. Now, if you want to see some more notes and bonus material on this topic, or look for an alternative approach using the filter function, you can check out the link in the description below. There's links to the written tutorial and a video on how to do this with filter. If you like the tutorial, hit that like button and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next tutorial.